I'm Dan Ramaday and I'm reporting from Positive TV. Today Positive TV finds ourselves in Brighton and I'm standing outside the Grand Hotel. 25 years ago the IRA planted a bomb at this hotel at the Conservatives party conference. We're here to meet two people who are very much directly involved with that event. We're here to meet Patrick McGee, the man who planted the bomb on behalf of the IRA. When passing sentence, the judge at Patrick McGee's trial recommended the IRA bomber should serve at least 35 years. But today, thanks to the early release scheme, part of the Good Friday Agreement, he walked out of the Mays prison after just 40. And Joe Berry, whose father Sir Anthony was killed on that day. Joe, nine years ago, sought out Patrick to try and understand what happened, what caused him to come and plant a bomb and look at conflict resolution. Their journey has been extraordinary. They've worked together in the last nine years, and today, 25 years on, they are launching their charity, Building Bridges for Peace. And we're going to learn about their journey, about these two people coming together and looking for a path of conflict resolution. We're also going to watch a screening of the film Soldiers of Peace, of which their story is featured. So, Joe, thank you for agreeing to meet with us today. It's a special day for you today, isn't it? It's 25 years on from the death of your father who was killed here at the Brighton bombings at the Grand Hotel. And you've been on an incredible journey since then. I wanted to meet Pat to build that bridge, to see him as a human being, and to hear his story, to put a human face to the enemy. What have you learned from meeting Pat and you know, going through this journey together? I've learned that beyond every label, um, every enemy, there is a human being. And it's possible to dialogue and to communicate and that if Pat had had more choices, he would have taken them. I've also learned that we're all capable of using violence. That in difficult, extraordinary times, we can all be that person who hurts another human being. So, Jo, your um, story has been well documented in the press this week. How has it been for you? What's the, the reaction of the media been like? I can understand that some people are very um, challenged by what I've done now and uh, think that maybe I'm excusing violence and, and that that um, you know, a lot of people believe that when someone's done something wrong they need to be sort of punished forever and I can understand that you know, and some people sit in pain and you know and they have a natural reaction to to want to see Patrick as the enemy. Yeah. Well um, I was thinking while well, coming down on the train that it's actually five years since I was here last because myself and Joe did an interview here five years on the 20th anniversary so you're back today and we're, we're back also in a week in which we both appeared uh, in the committee room in the House of Commons and it, it, uh, that generated quite a, 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 a lot of media attention, not all of it good, which was sad and not in keeping with the spirit of the event. In, in terms of being there, I thought it was a very worthwhile exercise and I was extremely glad I was invited and, that, and to have done it. I think was we spend 2,000 times more on war um, and weapons than we do on conflict resolution and prevention. So I really would like to find a way to, to help governments understand and politicians that we really need more resources to look at how we resolve conflict. In that way, we can really change the world in a peaceful way, rather than this war on terror, which all that does is create more victims who then become, could become more victimizers. Come here today uh, to see a screening of Soldiers of Peace, which is a film in which um, there are stories from all around the world of people who've chosen to resolve conflict in a peaceful way. Um, and Pat and I are, are, have a small part to play in the film towards the end. Um, we are taken back to Brighton and we walk past the Grand Hotel um, and we're sort of reflecting on our journey and, and our dialogue and what we've learned over the years. It's remarkable that I met Joe and I killed her father but that she is still willing to meet me and we both still recognise that uh, it can be a benefit for us both. And then we're here to celebrate the launch of your charity, Building Bridges for Peace, with Patrick McGee and um, about how you've come together and look at conflict resolution. This is um, a, a work that actually started just two months after the bomb had gone off. I first had this idea of building bridges and now we've just got a charity status. Hopefully today everything will go well and people can focus on you know, the work of uh, Joe's charity. Everybody needs to have the doctrine of forgiveness. It's very difficult, 
It's meant to be difficult, and everybody is meant to have it. Well, I, I came really to, to listen to Joe, Joe Berry speaking with Patrick McGee. Uh, I respect both of them enormously. I, I've come from north of London uh, because I think it's a, an ex extraordinary uh, important occasion. Um, this notion of sorry, Pat, how compelled have you felt to repent or say, I am sorry for what I did? And to what extent have you said, no, I'm not sorry for what I did, but I'm going to face up to consequences. Which is it for you? 25 years after a terrible event, and I'm sitting here on a platform with Joe, and I killed her father. And I'm in a town that uh, I visited 25 years ago as a member of the IRA. And I'm sure there are, that'll be challenging for many in the audience and many in this town. It doesn't really matter that I can um, look back at the past, examine motivations and justify decisions I made in the past and justify the struggle I was a part of. The point is, as a human being, I have carried that weight that I've hurt other human beings and that does cause conflict. Violence is a strategy might um, open up some new ways of communication, but the cost is too much. I think if one person is hurt, it's not worth it. Um, people have been uh, hurt, killed and damaged by my actions. It doesn't matter about the justification. All I can hope is that by um, being present here, presenting myself, that people will start to break down what I think are, are the misrepresentations that happen in conflict. And I was just reflecting today, standing outside the front of the building here, that this event has been held publicly advertised, well in advance, with no security, and an absolute changed atmosphere surrounding it. And I think that really says something, certainly about your work and the work of others like you, and I think that's a real achievement, or a sign of a real achievement. When I know people that have been hurt in Iraq, like in from car bombs and things for a war that they don't believe in, they're only there because their friends are there as well and they're trying to protect each other. I think it's important not to turn anger into violence though. Yeah, yeah. Like, I agree. Anger, anger at the government and stuff shouldn't turn into violence because then you're just doing what they're doing. I'm Paul Oerstreicher. Um, I used to be chairman of Amnesty International, so you won't be surprised if I say this film is tremendous. It's, I think, it's a real breakthrough uh, on all sorts of grounds. One of the things is it draws together um, peace campaigners, draws together people who have actually gone through the experience of painfully making peace, um, and at the same time recognizing that the military, for example, are not demonized. They have a role to play in making peace. They can be part of the answer to the problem rather than just saying soldiers are the problem. Uh, it's all about communication, how we communicate. And I really believe I can communicate with someone um, and they can close down and get defences and then want to attack, or I can communicate and they can open up um, and start talking about the real needs and issues in their lives. And then that's the way we're going to go forward, you know, to be able to speak with respect and empathy and trying to understand the other and they're far less likely to want to attack and hurt. But this does mean um, suspending my judgment and not seeing the enemy in you or in anyone. And, and I think when, when we're hurting, you know, I, I still have that need to want to blame and to, to make someone responsible. So that's why I think it's a, a daily choice, it's daily work that we can all do. You know, every time we're, we're demonizing, demonizing someone, looking at, OK, so what is it I need to do to help myself right now? Their mission is to understand the roots of violence, terrorism and war to ensure that conflict prevention is practised everywhere. I think their story is extraordinary and I think we can all learn a lot about what's happened here in Brighton and by coming together what can be achieved through conflict resolution.